Welcome back everybody. I told you wouldn't have to wait long, like I say, we've got a week here so I can bash out a few of these videos. On the last video, we looked at HMIs and we looked at HMIs with code sys and what we did there is we had our start push buttons, our stop push button controlling a lamp, just some basic digital control interfacing with the PLC and just showing you how we can change different states, different elements there. Like I say though, it was just basic control. What we could do now is we can add a bit more to this by adding things like analog control. Well, analog and it's sort of a basic element, not dealing with anything on the shop floor like a transducer or anything like that. More so just from the PLC, more so from the simulator aspect of it all. So let's jump into this project and what we're going to do is we're going to create a little project to change the pressure or the temperature of something via setting a set point on the screen, telling it to go and then having a bar graph or whatever displaying the current value for us. So let's go ahead and do that now. So at the moment on my screen, I've got my start, stop, push buttons and that there turns on and turns off the lamp and that's all done through the PLC program. As I mentioned before, the PLC program is what's, what controls everything on the shop floor, not the HMI. HMI is just something that we interface with. So let's just take this here and let's just put it in the top left hand corner for now and let's go back to our visualization toolbox. Right, so over here we've got our measurement controls and in our measurement controls we've got things like bar displays, meters, we've got a 90 degree meter, a 180 degree meter and a full 360 degree meter. These are essentially the same, just different sizes effectively or different shapes. And we've also got a potentiometer and our potentiometer is just like a pot that we can change a value with. So let's add our potentiometer into this screen. Now like I say, we're not doing any sort of screen design here. All we're doing is we're just having a look at different elements to start with before we actually get into some screen design. So there's our potentiometer and you can see this little notch here, this little node, that's our sort of like current value that we're setting it to. And you can see I've got a scale of zero all the way up to 100. And that's fine for now. Let's go back to our visualization toolbox. And what we'll do is we'll use a, we'll use a, a bar display, yeah, well, let's use a bar display. And again, we can change the size of this to whatever we want. That looks canny. Yep, and then right click that, alignment and align horizontal. That's fine with me. Right, so there's my current display. Now at the moment, this is tagged to nothing. So if I just downloaded this, nothing would work. So let's go back to our PLC program. And we're gonna create a variable inside of here and we'll call this, pressure. I'll set this to an integer and we'll leave that at so. Let's go back to our visualization. Now if I click on the potentiometer there again on the right hand side we've got our properties for this and if I look down here you've got your scale and you can see here the scale start and the scale end if I change that to a thousand you can see here things went all skew with and that's because the main scale is set to 20 so it's giving you a, a value every 20 notches which between a thousand is a hell of a lot like 50 notches there so what we can do is we can change this to every hundred and it starts to give us a bit of a better value look at we've also got a subscale this is the sort of in betweens etc and a scale line width in terms of the actual size of the line if i change this to 10 you'll see these minor notches, you might be able to see it on your screen there, that changes as well with this. If I just change that to 20, again, I've got a bit of a better display now on this side of things here. Right, so I've got that all set up there currently. If I now go to my bar graph, Again, same thing. Now, if, if I've got a bar graph and this is showing a scale of 0 to 100, I've got my potentiometer set to 0 to 1000, I need to change my bar graph. So if I change this to 1000, again, same thing, looks a bit naff. So if I change the main scale to 100, there we go, a bit better now. And again, I can change this subscale to 20, so it gives us a point every 20 on there, which now looks a little bit better. I can also change things like the colors inside of this here, so I can change this bar graph color from green to whatever I wanted. So let's just drop this down. And again, I like the sort of salmon, the coral color. Let's use that for example, obviously we can 
tweak this to whatever our heart's content. But there we go. Actually, I might change that back because the, the salmon's not that great for this sort of uh, contrast. Uh, let's change it to cayenne. There we go. Beautiful. Right, so there's our whole setup here. Now, at the moment, again, it's still not assigned to anything. So if I go back to my potentiometer. So I want to go to variable at the very top here. If I just click on this and I go to pressure. So I've set that to my pressure. And again, for the bar graph over here, where you see value, drop that down. I change that to pressure as well. One thing that I would like about CodeSys is just keeping these tags in, in, in the similar area. So for example, when you go to your lamp, you got that there. When you go to this, you got that there. When you go to this, you got that there. But then you go to the start and everything's at the bottom of the screen where you got the input configuration. Might be better to keep it all very near the top there or in the same sort of area makes things a little bit easier for us. Right, so currently what I've done is I've set this up to look at my pressure, which is currently doing nothing in the PLC. It's just a value that I've created. And I've got my bar graph displaying the pressure. So what we'll see is basically a one-in-one -one situation where as I change this potential with the pot, you'll see the bar graph change as well. Nothing too outrageous so far. So let's just save this. Let's just log in. Log in with online change. That's fine. And let's download that in the PLC. And... There we go, don't need to start that up, that's great. So if I come into here, just minimize these areas here. And as I change this potentiometer part, you can see there my bar graph is changing as well. Like I say, this is essentially just a one for one. You've got your pressure, you've got your pressure. So you've got something that's displaying the pressure, something that's allowing you to control that pressure. Now, as you'll know on the shop floor, things don't work just like that. We don't just have our potentiometer and up there's our pressure at the same rate as well. What you would tend to have is you'd have your potentiometer being like a set point, and then you would have the, the pumps or whatever we're using to, to create this pressure, to increase this pressure, that would then control on the bar graph. So you would usually have your set point going, and then you would see this starting to move, starting to tweak on the bar graph itself. Sometimes what you might do is you might say, right, I want to set my set point there and then you might want to press a button to start this whole operation and then you would see your pressure change state again you don't want your hmi doing all of this control just controlling the pump from here because imagine that imagine your operator just goes whoop and there we go off to a thousand there's nothing in the plc going hang on wait there you can't be doing that so again this is just mainly for operator interface this is just for feedback the plc's for all the controls so Let's go ahead and do that. Let's disconnect, let's log out, and let's go back to the PLC program. And I want to create a pressure set point. And that's gonna be our integer as well. So we've got our pressure set point and we've got our pressure. So if I now go to visualization, go to here on the potentiometer and click on the variable where you see pressure, and this is gonna be the set point. It's not going to be the actual pressure, it's going to be the set point, and this is displaying the actual pressure. So now, let's go back to the PLC program. What I want to have happen is effectively, operator sets the pressure via this potentiometer. Now, it's going to be not so precise because we're dealing in these hundreds, and this is going to be going down the individual degree there. And then I want the operator to press the start. When he presses the start, it's then going to increase the pressure. Now, we're not controlling anything here. We're not going to control it at a certain flow rate or increase rate. What we'll do is we'll just have this based off of time. So when the operator presses the start, it's going to control this lamp. Now, again, I don't really want a lamp to control the process. What I might want to do, though, is I might say, right, you control the run signal. Again, I can go back to my toolbox, go back to my ladder elements, um, insert a branch here, and then put a coil after it, and then have that go into my lamp. So now, when you press the start, the run turns on, the lamp then turns on. So if I then insert a new network, there we go. Now what I want to do is, when we are running, so let's put in a normally open contact, so when we are running, 
I want it to start to increase the pressure until it gets to that set point. So I want to increase the pressure, let's just say every one tenth of a second for now. So how many tenths of a second are in a second? One second, uh, ten, sorry. How many tenths of a second are in a second? 10 so that means it'll increase 10 points every second if i then want to get to a thousand that would then take me a hundred seconds to do so just over a minute i'm not going to make us go all the way up to a thousand though we could of course decrease or increase that time period to change that change in rate let's go to our ton our timer drop that into place and let's call that um uh ink rate so this is our increase rate and then say okay to that and again let's just change this to t hash 100 milliseconds get rid of that and i want to put a normally closed contact in here and i effectively want my ink rate whoops my ink rate dot q so when this is on, this time is going to run for 100 milliseconds, turn on, open that contact, turning off the timer, closing the contact, starting it again. So it's going to create a pulse for one PLC scan every 100 milliseconds. And this is what I'm going to use to increase my temperature or increase my pressure or whatever I'm controlling from there. So let's drop this down. So let's create a branch. Whoops. So let's create a new network here. And I want to say when we are running and our ink rate is on, whoops. And our ink rate is on. I then want to go to my maths instructions, grab my add, drop that into there. And I want to take my pressure and I want to add one to it and store it in the pressure. And this is basically just creating like an increment. So some PLCs have an increment and that'll just increase a value or decrease a value. We can use a subtract for that. But this is just going to increase our pressure. Now the problem is it's just going to increase the pressure whenever the PR process is running, whenever the operator presses go. So what we could say here is, well, I want to compare the value. I want to check what the value is in the pressure and what the value we have set it to via the potentiometer. So to do that, if I go and grab... So to do that, if I go and grab my comparators, so inside of our math operators, you've got your comparators. So let's come down to here and insert a new network. Get rid of this window. And what I want to do is I want to use my GE comparator. So what I want to say is when we are running, I want to monitor our pressure. And I want to monitor it with the pressure set point. Now, why do you think we're using the GE comparator? Why don't I just use the equals to comparator? Because when the pressure is equals to the set point, it will also turn on. So why don't I do that? Well, safety. If we use an equals to comparator, what happens if the pressure doesn't see it hit the set point for whatever reason the plc wets the bed for a second it doesn't see it hit the set point and it goes above well then you're no longer equals to and that pressure will keep on increasing if we set it to ge that means when it hits a set point and it is and it is equals to it should see it and then should turn on our um our limit but if it does wet the bed for a second and it does go over the set point, well, it'll see that as well and it'll capture that because it's greater than. And we'll capture it at both elements there. So we've just got some, self, uh, some safety built into this. So now if I then go to here and I put in a coil there, I can just say that um, pressure limit. So now we're at our pressure limit, and what I want to do is when we are at our pressure limit, 
I want to stop increasing the pressure. So this will just stop doing that. It'll stop increasing the pressure from there. Okay, so let's have a look at that. Let's save our work. Let's log in. And what we'll do is we'll do a login with download. Do a full update because we made quite a few changes there. And let's uh, see if this works unless I've forgotten something, of course. That could always happen. So what we'll do is we'll go to the visualization. We should see our program all kick in. There it is there. We'll go to our PLC program and drop that out. And let's just open this up a bit. So at the moment, our pressure is at zero. Our pressure set point is at zero. We're not running, so the pressure limit hasn't been hit. If I was to increase this value now, you can see there the pressure set point is changing. Now again, on this screen, we don't have much visualization, so we're not seeing much information from here. And that's purely because we're just using these little hash marks to find out where we are. But here we can actually see the true values, 157. If I just bump that up to around about 200, so we're at 204 there. And we're ready to go. So what I would do is I would then press the start push button, which will control our run and begin running this time. And this time is just gonna just going to um, run and pulse every 100 milliseconds, increasing our pressure. And then when it hits 204, the pressure limit will turn on and break that, stop the increment. And what you'll do is you'll see our bar graph start to increase up to the 200 limit. If I press start there, there we go. And there you can see our pressure is now increasing. There's our bar graph increasing. And when it hits that 204, it should then stop. Again, if I stop the process, it's just going to stop. The pressure's still there. It's still at our set point. And then press the start. And it'll continue from where it last left off. And then when it hits 204, it should then stop. There we go. So this time it's still running, it's still pulsing, but because we've hit this limit, it's no longer going to increase anymore. So we're now at that limit from there. Now what you could do is you could have that light turn on when you hit the limit. All we would do in the PLC program is go into here, move that lamp down here. So when the pressure limit is hit, we know that. So we know the operator's got some more feedback on that side there. But that's there is just showing you a little bit of information about how we could use these different sorts of applications, not just digital signals, but something that's got a value associated to it, like an analog signal, so to speak. So we've got this value here, we can change the state, and then we can have that change from here as well. If I just increase the temperature, increase the pressure a little bit more, this is gonna start running again. Now obviously, there's bugs in this design right now, and the bugs are the fact that if we lowered this, it would stop, but we're still at a high pressure, so you might want to decrease the pressure. To do that, how would we do it? Well, we could use subtracts. So we could then subtract the, temp uh, the pressure, and that would then start decreasing it. So it's constantly sort of like chasing its tail until it reaches that set point there. But that there is just an introduction on these other variables that we've got here, sort of like measurement tools inside the PLC. Again, I don't want the operator using this to just activate everything. I want the PLC program still doing all of that side of things. This is more so for the operator just to set a set point and off we go. We can start running from there and using some sort of visualization as feedback. Again, you've got other feedback properties in here if I just come offline. We've got other feedback properties in here. If we go to our visualizations, we could use meters instead. We could drag a meter in, and this meter would change state just like this bar graph would. But that there are the measurement controls that we've got over here. We've also got things like histograms, and a histogram is very similar to things like trends. So it will show you like previous history effectively. All right, there, there is measurement controls inside of CodeSys, inside of our HMI application. I'll see you on the next video, guys. Once again, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and also share it as well. Helps us out a lot. See you later.